Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be around this beautiful God forsaken country of ours. Welcome to the 85th Minute Rugby League Radio. Curtis Wood with you. Uh, and if you'd like to follow us, you can follow me at Curtis Wood One, or you can follow my very esteemed, very first guest on this wonderful podcast, Mr. Stephen Mascord. Good afternoon to you, sir. Could be morning, depending on when people are listening, but hello, mate. Thanks for being here. No, no worries. Beautiful, but God forsaken. I don't necessarily think. You know, you need God's permission to be beautiful. You yeah. don't, do you? <laughs> oh, I don't know where to go with that one. But there's a reason why I'm doing a podcast and not a, a video cast. Uh, sorry, did you want to... I, I was going to ask you this question first up because I plugged my Twitter account straight away. So did you want to plug yours or yeah, one I'm of your the, 39? No, I'm the real Stevis, which is T-H-E-R-E-A-L-S-T-E-A-V-I-S. Uh, yeah, that's great. And I've got a podcast too called White Line Fever and you can find it on iTunes. There you go. So that is the uh, that is the podcast that you can listen to, um, which is clearly already been up for a number of hours before this is ever going to get the, the light of day. So, uh, all right, first order of business is um, something that I think, Steve, that you'd know a fair bit about. So I'm actually really happy that you're, you're on for us this afternoon, Steve. And that is with the Newcastle Knights and the link to the NRL of Marwan Kukash, the, the, the billionaire um, racehorse owner who already owns the Salford City Reds. Uh, and clearly has already stated that he loves rugby league. He loves the National Rugby League. They're the lo- Red De- they're the change their name. He changed yeah. their name to the Salford Red Devils, uh, yep. which obviously ties in with Man U. Uh, so uh, that was part of his overhaul um, at, at uh, Salford. Um, I mean, all, all Marwin has said is that he's talking to an NRL club, which yeah, he 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 loves publicity. Uh, so you know, I suppose it's a way for him to attract publicity without actually saying anything. Um, I, I mean. People in Newcastle have had their fingers burned a little bit by private ownership, haven't they? So to have a foreigner come in and uh, own the club, and especially someone who uh, is um, so keen on a high profile and is fond of doing things like ripping up documents at press conferences while the camera's rolling, mm. you know, I, I don't think that's that process is going to happen overnight, if, if, if ever, but I don't think we should turn our back on Marlon. Yeah, and that's the interesting too, uh, thing too because you've got private sponsorship now for the Melbourne Storm after all those years with News Limited. Um, where does rugby league go, especially Australian sport? Because I don't think in general, this is just my opinion, Australian sports lovers aren't ready for private sponsorship. Well, private Thoughts ownership. That? Oh, yeah, I, I will, that's, yeah. What did I say? Ownership, no, no, sorry. but um, I think uh, you know Russell Crowe has, and uh, Peter Holmes Court have worked at, at Souths. I mean, people don't think of the Broncos as a News Limited owned club, but that's effectively... What they are, we've also got a uh, in you know Melbourne. We've got a a, a cartel or a um, group, a business group, owning the Melbourne Storm, and of course Eric Watson uh, with his um, ownership, uh, along with uh, Owen Glenn of, of the uh, Warriors. So, uh, you say we're not ready for it, but we've got it. I think we're just not ready for ostentatious owners. You mm. know, we're not ready, not ready for Roman Abramovich. You know, uh, we want our owners to be sort of in the background. Uh, and I think what happened with Peter Holmes at court is that he kind of, um, at one at one stage, you know, the club was very much uh, a platform for him and, 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 and that didn't go down so well. And now, and now, we, now we don't hear much from Peter Holmes at court. So uh, as I said, it's not so much private ownership, but Marwan's uh, flamboyant personality could rub a few people the wrong way. Especially in the sport of rugby league too. And it's which segues into the Newcastle Knights and a complete atrocity of a year. It's just gone from 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 worse to worse to worse to bad to worse again. Mm-hmm. Alex McKinnon, um, a shocking injury, which has changed his life forever and, and his friends and family and even Wayne Bennett. It's changed their lives forever. The debacle that, that was Nathan Tinkler. Uh, and then you've also got um, what's happening now with Wayne Bennett. And it's clear this has got to be the bottom of the barrel and it's only going to get better for the club. Can you see them coming out of this on the other side anytime soon or is this going to take a lot longer because it is such a, a historical club? You've got to remember too that Newcastle Rugby League goes all the way back to the foundations of this sport in this country mm. and and they've got the, the, the real NRL, what do they call it up there? It's a rugby league hotbed and these people, um, they don't deserve this, really. I, mean, um, I, th- I think maybe... Someone I read this morning, it might have been Andrew Webster, uh, said that Wayne had left Newcastle in very much a similar state to how he left the Dragons in that there was an ageing roster and there needed, there's going to need to be a regeneration of playing staff over the coming years. So 
you know, the light at the end of the tunnel will be, you know, I think Paul Paul Harrigan, the chairman, spoke very passionately on Triple M on Sunday about uh, restoring some of the old values of the club and, and encouraging local talent. Um, there's going to, a lot's going to depend on who the new coach is. Once they've got a new coach better down, I think they're probably going to get someone who's, uh, who is local, uh, who probably hasn't coached first grade before, and they're going to basically start from scratch. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, but I, th- I think it's a fair way off. And, and when you think about it too, I mean, you've got all these franchises, uh, inverted commas, but Newcastle will never really be a, a franchise because the heart of the club is the fans. And no other rugby league team in this country can understand um, the, the culture of Newcastle, can they? Oh, I think you. Uh, I think you can get an appreciation by going there and going to a game. And you know, I know, I know people might compare it to uh, uh, the Green Bay Packers in, in the NFL, where it's a to- you know the population base is quite small, uh, but they've got very passionate fans. I mean, but I suppose the population base in Townsville is even smaller. So uh, there's got to be a balance struck really between big business sponsorship and all that sort of stuff, and and not. Um, um, locking out or excluding the fans, and also, the, I mean, the local media have basically had a bad relationship too with the, the Knights under Tinkler, you know. Um, and a lot of it was personal; it was related to him and the coverage of him rather than the coverage of the club. Darius Boyd now is off to the Brisbane Broncos, apparently, or he could be anywhere else. Your money's got to be on he's going to chase his. Well, I don't know what you call him. His beloved mentor, Mental, Wayne Bennett. Mentor's man, yeah. yeah. Mentor's the uh, word. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I and mean, how many fullbacks do they oh. really need up there, you know? Um, and, uh, I mean, they, they were linked with Greg Eden as well from in- from Super League, who uh, was supposed to be the English Billy Slater. So, um, you know, I just think it's ridiculous they've got so many fullbacks. I mean, they, they just don't need Darius Boyd. And we saw, we saw on uh, Saturday night, when uh, you know there, there was uh, there were some players dropped, Daniel Vido being one of them for disciplinary reasons, and two uh, new uh, wingers uh, came in, Jordan Carhu and Lachlan Maranta, and they were exceptional. They were really good. So um, you imagine the fullbacks who aren't new to fullback end up on the wing, but there's also a lot of depth on the wing there as well. Uh, it's a strange situation with Darius, but uh, I, it would appear that yeah, he'll, he'll just go wherever Wayne is. Broncos salary cap dramas. Do they have salary cap dramas? If they do, how can they afford any more players into the club? And who are they going to sack to get them into this this cap? Because this won't go away either about the Broncos salary or will cap it. issues. Or will it? I reckon it's, <laughs> it, it's going to come back again. Or will it, it go away? I mean, I mean, the, the whole thing is that um, you know a lot of people think Andrew G is basically taking a fall for the club. It's a former football manager who quit when this first uh, came up. Um, there was an, a story by Roy Masters last week about payments uh, to players uh, and, and, the, and the involvement of the league's club uh, and that uh, these payments hadn't been accounted for. Uh, you would hope the NRL, I mean, you know, you would hope the NRL would, would uh, come down with some sort of ruling soon. Uh, I mean, you know, players going to the club, most notably Anthony Milford, uh, is there, I mean, I know people in Canberra who've got their fingers crossed that this whole thing stops um, the club signing Anthony, Anthony Milford. Um, I don't, I, I, people close to the deal suggest that it, there's no, it's not in any jeopardy at all. So anyway, to answer your question, we we just don't know, do we? We don't know. I mean, it's been inve- it's been under investigation for a couple of months, and we've heard nothing. So well, all we can do is sit tight. There's something there. There's something there. There's got to be Mick Potter's job at the West Tigers. I can't believe that Mick Potter. Uh, is his job still in jeopardy? If you think more with this squad as as they are right now, developing the way they are, no coach in their right mind could do more than Mick Potter. Yeah, the the thing that I found interesting was a story in, in Rugby League Week last week saying that the players uh, didn't think they thought um, that they, Todd Payton could do a better job, and that uh, you know that Mick Potter was a nice guy, but he you know blah blah blah, unnamed players saying this sort of stuff. So um, that sort of thing happens often happens when it's part of a concerted push for a, a result, which would be to force him out. I, I think um, he's done a good job this year. The, the, the players that uh, have come through under him, um, you know, particularly uh, Luke Brooks and Mitchell Moses, has done, uh, you know, he's going to be remembered as the guy who gave those players their debuts. And uh, results-wise, there's been an improvement. So I think he deserves an extension. Um, and, I, you know, I... I I I sort of dislike all this kind of backroom dealing, Machiavellian manoeuvring that seems to be going on. Um, 
you know, he either ha- he either gets he's re- he's either resigned or he's not resigned. I, I think he deserves to be resigned for at least another year. So that that's what I think should happen. Uh, based on you know, everyone says it's a results based business, and he's re- the results have improved. Um, so. You know, and then and then when the results go the wrong way, then it doesn't become results based business. It becomes you've lost the dressing room. You know what I mean? So it's yep. like lost the dressing room seems to be an excuse for sometimes for getting rid of a coach who, who would keep his job if the if if he was just judged on results. Yeah. Um, I, I I say they should resign him. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that, um, one hundred percent. And it'd be almost like me sitting there com- commentating the VB New South Wales Cup on a Saturday for two GLF, and then and then the the producer saying, "Oh, we're gonna have a review." But we're going to have the the old presenter that's now no longer in the job to review your job. What chance have you got? I mean, Brian Smith's coming to do this. I don't know what relationship Brian Smith has with Mick Potter, but what kind of confidence can you have coming out of a report that comes from an old coach? Yeah, but he's not the previous West Tigers coach. I mean, look, if I would, let's put it this way: if if I was asked to do a review of a newspaper office, I'm not sure I'd do. It. I don't know. It would depend. I mean, it would be better if I didn't know the people. Hmm. Uh, not that anyone would ever ask me, but I'm just look. There is no one day, mate. There is day. no there is no business in the world that needs a review from me. But so <laughs> I just I just pluck that out of the out of the air. But you know, like it'd be better if I didn't know the people and I guess I would just interview everyone and, and try to reach some conclusions and put them down on paper and uh, you know I think um, that's all that's happened here um, so I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I, they're both former Bradford coaches um, yep. um, uh, Brian Smith and, and Mick Potter and Mick Potter played under Brian Smith for St George no did he, he would have yeah, yeah he would yeah. have yeah, so. 92 and 93 grand yeah, finals yeah exactly, exactly. and Tony so, Smith Brian Smith's brother played with Mick in the 93 grand final yeah there you go so um now you can tell me this. To what extent have the has had the report itself hasn't been leaked, has it? It's just been kind of elements of it, uh, and it has it been in verbatim, or has it been like a summary of? I, well, there was a lot of information coming out of that 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 newspaper article. I can't remember which mm-hmm. website it was on that I saw it in. Oh, sorry, newspaper. Mm-hmm. I don't know which newspaper. <laughs> I got from. Um, no, but uh, and then I actually they do still exist. Yeah, no, no. I, I saw one once. I actually no. Well, I still read MX, which is some kind yeah, of newspaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, that's a that's a good newspaper. It's modern really world. <laughs> um, but then I and then I, I scoured through Twitter and then I saw Grant May's account. Uh, mm-hmm. And and obviously on Twitter you get um, a lot of rocks and diamonds when you you know CEOs are asking uh, answering questions of punters out there. Um, and one punter really gave it to him and said, "I can't believe this. Uh, you know, this club continues to leak information." Blah blah blah. Grant May refusedly denied it. He continued mm. to deny it. Uh, and he said that it, it, it didn't happen through us, but who else would it have came through and how many people would have had that information to pass it on? Mm. I mean, how many people, and they don't even have a full board at the moment, so how many play people would have actually had it in their hands to pass it well, on? I know Dan Ganain on Triple M was very uh, 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 critical of West Tigers just saying that, you know, it's not only the guy doesn't get a job, but he kind of gets, it's a scorched earth thing where he becomes unemployable in future as well because the contents of these reports... Uh, get leaked, but Mick Potter's handled it all really well. I think he's been around the block to the extent that he was coaching for nothing yep. when when Bradford went broke. Uh, so he, he's he's philosophical about it all, and he, he'll you know whatever will be will be. And and to think everything that he's already done for this team, you'd like to be the next coach to come in and coach that West Tigers side with all that talent there. It's ridiculous that Mick Potter. But Mick you know Pot- all those structures, like I mean, he he obviously had to rebuild the place after uh, the departure of. Tim Sheens and and now they're going to start again. I just I just think you're going to have to defer any possible success, but for another year or two or three or four. Why would why would you do that when it would appear that better times are just around the corner? And he hasn't really had enough time to to, to put his stamp on the place. All right, beautiful Steve. Now give us some plugs. Plug them again. Your Twitter account, your websites. Give us everything right now. Give it again. Okay. Uh, if you uh, stevemascot.com is where you can find me and find out what I'm doing and who I'm working for and whatever. Um, I my podcast is White Line Fever, which you can find on uh, iTunes uh, and also SoundCloud. And what else? Uh, if you if you're into rock, hotmetalonline.com. The domain, I almost lost it because I didn't pay the bill, but it's still there. It's still Saturday there. 2 from 2 p.m. on 893fm.com.au. You can listen to the West Tigers and North Sydney Bears. Uh, that's from 2 p.m. I don't know if we'll be there, but uh, Mike Sheen will definitely be there. Thank you, Steve. You're an absolute superstar. Thanks for coming all let's, the way out to Liverpool, mate. Let's, uh, let's do this more often. Absolutely. Thank you very much.